Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is certainly living up to the hype, so I wanted to spotlight the women behind the quirky Tim Burton. Hey y'all, my name is Mike Vaughn, and in this video, I want to talk about the women that Tim Burton seems to enjoy working with in the past and the present. Before we begin, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Now, back to the video. First, a little housekeeping. Here's the thing, I'm not a drama channel. The aim of this video is just to simply look at Tim Burton and the women he often uses in his films, which I really find fascinating. I mainly want to look at women who have been in three or more starring or supporting roles in Tim Burton's films. Early in his career, Tim Burton knew that the right leading lady was key. In his short film, Frank and Weenie, for example, the budding director used cult figure Shelley Duvall and a young Sofia Coppola. Burton would also direct an episode of Shelley Duvall's fairy tale theater entitled Aladdin and His Magic Lamp. And holy crap, this episode is just as weird as you might imagine. This episode came right before his second feature film, Beetlejuice, but more on that later. During a 2019 New York Comic Con appearance, Paul Rubens explained how, in part, it was thanks to Shelley and her excitement for the director that made Rubens want Burton to direct a movie based on his character, Pee Wee Herman. And a girl that I know whose name was Mary Edith Burrell, who was a performer and a writer, she was... I had known her, she'd been in the Growlings a long time, and she turned around to me and she went, Oh my God, oh Paul, I know exactly who it is. His name's Tim Burton. You've got to like look at him. He's phenomenal. Oh, oh my God, Paul. And, and I could just see her, the more she was thinking about it, the more she was going, This is the guy, like you've got to talk to this guy. And then she said to me, Paul, Shelley just worked with him. Shelley Duvall was in Frank and Wayne. And she had, my friend Mary Edith had just seen Frank and Wayne. I've always had such a soft spot and admired Shelley Duvall so much, particularly because she was partially responsible, she was involved in this decision with Tim Burton. But also, the first, the first time I ever was hired to do something where it was starring Paul Rubens was Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater. You know, <laughs> We became friends, and I just, I just love everything about Shelley Duvall. My friend said to me, "Oh my God, you know Shelley? Call Shelley Duvall." <laughs> about Tim Burton. So I called Shelley Duvall, and I said, "Shelley, Mary Edith told me you're in a movie that was directed by somebody named Tim Burton, and I'm looking for a director for my beauty movie." And Shelley did the same thing on the phone that this girl had done at the party. She went, "Oh my God, Paul." Oh my God, oh my God, what, oh, wow, he's so perfect, he's the exact person. So two people I really admired had like flipped out and I felt both of these people knew me and knew the character and knew enough to go, that their, that their recommendation or their vibe that it was like a, the right person. And this project would of course be realized as Pee Wee's Big Adventure. This movie launched both Paul Rubin's career and Tim Burton. On a budget of $7 million, the film grossed $40 million at the box office. In the book Burton on Burton, Tim Burton doesn't talk a lot about Shelley, but here's what I found in my research. When referring to the cast of Frank and Weenie, he said, quote, They were all great. I've been very lucky that way with actors, end quote. And he talks about Aladdin saying, quote, Right after Frank and Weenie, Shelley asked me to do one of the one of the episodes of her show Fairy Tale Theater because they basically hired name directors like Francis Ford Coppola, and I felt honored. End quote. He also added, quote, Shelley created a great atmosphere for that show. She got people there doing it for no money. She was good that way, end quote. Weirdly, outside of his short film Frank and Weenie and the television episode of Fairy Tale Theater, Burton would never work with or cast her in any of his future projects. 
After Pee-wee's Big Adventure became a big hit for Warner Brothers, suddenly the young director could virtually pick his next project, and what a follow-up it would be. His second feature film is the classic Beetlejuice. This would be the first but not last time working with Catherine O'Hara, playing the yuppie artist Delia Dietz. O'Hara is an icon known for her roles in Home Alone and more recently Schitt's Creek and just a ton of other amazing performances. She started her career in the legendary Second City comedy troupe that boasts an impressive alumni. Prior to Beetlejuice, she was in a few small roles, notably Martin Scorsese's After Hours, which, wow, is such a fantastic movie and you all should check it out. O'Hara would work on the following Burton projects. Catherine O'Hara wouldn't be the only muse he would find on the set of Beetlejuice. Indeed, while O'Hara brought years of experience to the role of the yuppie Delia, it was a fairly new to the business Winona writer that really caught his eye. While most movies have 20 somethings and up playing teenagers, Ryder was 16 when she starred as the goth teenager Lydia Dietz. Ryder grew up in a stimulating household with her mother Cynthia being an author, video producer, and editor. Her father, Michael D. Horowitz, was a well-regarded publisher, author, and antique book dealer. Her godfather was none other than beat legend Timothy Leary. In 1985, Ryder began an acting career and never looked back. In a touching moment, Ryder gave a speech at Tim Burton's Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony, September 3rd, 2024. Um, to work with Tim is like being invited to wander through his heart and imagination. It's the ultimate cathedral and one of my most cherished and sacred places to be, and I am eternally grateful for the time that I've spent there. And on a personal note, Tim, your friendship has been such an enormous gift. When I met you, I was a weird kid. And now you're you, adult. I know, um, you affirmed my voice, you reinforced my confidence to be myself, to go against the tides of conformity. Your creative inclusiveness showed me what true artistic collaboration looked like. And in other words, you made being a weird girl not just okay, but something to celebrate and even kind of cool. Um, and you've carried that torch for us weirdos um, everywhere, making us all feel seen and valued. Congratulations, I love you so much. Winona Ryder, everybody. <laughs> Ryder would work on the following Burton projects. Lisa Marie will be the first of several women that Burton both was in a relationship and used quite often. Lisa Marie met Tim Burton in 1993 while at a coffee bar after a modeling gig for Calvin Klein. The two dated from 1993 until 2001, and she was featured in every one of his directed projects during this time. While researching, I found a couple's profile from U.S. Weekly dated August of 1997. I'll link it in the description, but the entire thing is very cheesy, especially considering how unconventional Tim Burton's whole persona is. And here are some quotes from that article. Despite it being a cringe fluff piece, I did like this line, each you could say is the other's muse. 
what seemed like a weird gothic romance, like something out of one of his movies, things just didn't last. The tide seemed to shift as in 2001's Planet of the Apes, Tim Burton would pivot over to Helena Bottom Carter, who was in the lead role of that particular project. Marie would work on the following Burton films. Helena Bottom Carter is quite unique among Burton's muses as she and Depp are tied as most frequent collaborators with eight Burton projects both under their belts. The pair met on the set of Planet of the Apes, again co-starring then-girlfriend Lisa Marie, and by the premiere of the movie, Burton and Helena were walking the red carpet as a couple and oh man, poor Lisa must have been feeling all of the feelings that evening. The couple would never marry, but split in 2015. The couple would also have two children together. Helena worked on the following Burton projects. As far as who Burton's muses are these days, it seems pretty clear that's Jenna Ortega. And yeah, it seems to fit. Ortega is a scream queen, and so far she's worked on Burton's Wednesday series in the title role, and now Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Whether or not Tim Burton is a good guy, or what he's like to the women he dates and works with is something I felt I didn't want to nor need to discuss. After all, it's not the focus of this video. I wanted to highlight some fascinating women that seems to have sparked some creativity from an oddball artist. I've been a big fan of Burton since I was a kid, and I was equally always transfixed by the women in his films. As a baby gay, I was utterly in love with Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, and you know, it was something about that leather whip that just kind of spoke to me. The takeaway is these are some badass women and should be celebrated. Thanks for watching and please check out these other videos and I'll see y'all in the next one.